So, you've been scrolling through YouTube and seen thumbnails for old school RuneScape videos that have these cool characters and crazy animations and they're like the actual RuneScape models from the game itself. And you're thinking to yourself, how on earth do those people do that? Like, where and how do they build these crazy scenes and incredible animations and insane thumbnails that get me to click on them. Well, I am here today to show you exactly how content creators are using a tool called Blender to create old school RuneScape scenes for their thumbnails and even create animations uh, of their RuneScape characters within the game itself. So without further ado, Let's get started and I will show you everything you need to know on how to use Blender to create awesome scenes from old school RuneScape. So the first things first, let's go ahead and download the Blender software. This works for both Mac and Windows, but I'll be doing all of this on Windows. Um, if you Google Blender, it'll be the first option that, co that comes up. Um, so you can go to blender.org right here. I'll also leave the link in the description of this video. So from here, just go ahead and click download Blender and um, download the software and get it all set up. So there is one other thing that we'll need to do from within RuneLight itself in order to actually get the models out of the game and into Blender. So if you go into the plugins panel on RuneLight and go ahead and go down to the plugin hub and search for model. Uh, the first thing that should pop up is model exporter and go ahead and install this plugin because this is going to allow us to take those models from within the game and actually export them into a, a format that Blender can recognize and use. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So once you actually export your models uh, from the game, which I will show you in just a second, uh, you can actually find their actual files, what was exported by right clicking this uh, screenshot button right here and clicking open screenshot folder. And when you open that screenshot folder, it's gonna take you uh, right to the dot runelight uh, file and you'll see a, a um, folder in there called models. That's where all of your models are going to be. All right, so I have the plugin installed, that model exporter plugin. And in this video, I'm actually gonna be making a uh, rendering or 3D scene using RuneScape objects uh, for my upcoming video in my main to max series. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well if you'd like to check that out. Um, and it's gonna be all about the Calphite Queen, so it's gonna be very desert themed and desert oriented. So that's why I'm over here in this new Acropolis area for the new raids, um, because it's got a lot of cool desert assets that I can use in my scene. So, for example, if I wanted these bushes here, uh, you can examine them like this, and by holding down shift on the keyboard, you can see we now have a new option called export model. So just go ahead and click that. Nothing is actually going to happen, and there's some other stuff that, that's pretty neat around here that I might wanna export. So I might wanna use this tent in my scene. I might wanna use these tanning lines in my scene. Um, maybe this table would look nice somewhere. Um, it's always better to export more than less. Uh, so we can use a crate there. Um, and maybe there's some um, cool stuff like a, a skeleton or even this obelisk is pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and export that. Some pillars here. And so I'm, I'm pretty much just right clicking on everything that I can find uh, so that I can uh, export all of those models. And if you were wondering, uh, you can export NPCs like you would any other model, but for your player, you can't shift click on your player. So to export your player, you have to go to your worn equipment um, and sh hold down shift and then right click and export model for your player. So one thing that's actually really cool, you can see the way that my character is standing and positioned. This is how they will be exported when we actually go to import it into Blender. So if you want your character to be positioned a specific way or, or be doing something else, um, you can do an emote and export the model really quickly or do an action or animation um, and then export the, the model while you're doing that animation. And that's actually gonna export your character in the current stance that they were in the moment that you clicked this export model button. 
So when you first fire up Blender, you're going to be greeted uh, with a scene that looks like this. So pretty basic, just got your cube, a camera, and a light, and you can see your objects up here in the top right-hand corner. Um, so let's go ahead and import some of the objects that we exported from the, the Rune Light uh, or RuneScape game. So come up here to File in the top left-hand corner and go down to Import and then select the Wavefront or .obj object uh, option. And it's going to bring up this uh, file dialog. So go ahead and navigate to your .runelight folder. This is where those files are exported. Again, if you don't know where this is, right click on the screenshots button in, in RuneLight and click open folder. And that's going to take you to your .runelight folder. Uh, your models is going to be in there. Uh, for me, mine is in my C drive, users, my username, .runelight, and models. Um, so from here, you can basically select any model that you want to import. Um, since I'm making one that is desert themed and Calphite Queen oriented, of course, I'm going to want the Calphite Queen uh, object in here. So I'm going to select that Calphite Queen object. And you can see if we start to use our mouse wheel and zoom out a little bit, it is absolutely massive. Look at how big the Calphite Queen is. That is way too large. So let's go ahead and scale this down. Um, you can hit the S button on your keyboard. And then move your mouse in, and this is going to uh, scale out that, that Calphite Queen or really any model down to be much smaller. Uh, so it's nice to keep the square in here just for, for reference to, to kind of know how big your first uh, model that you imported should be. Uh, but once that's in here, you can go ahead and delete the cube, select it in the top right hand corner and press the delete key. All right, so now we have our Calphite Queen model here. And in this particular video or this project, what I'm trying to accomplish is I'm going to be making a YouTube thumbnail uh, for a scene that's going to be advertising my new video. And all I really care about is the thumbnail itself. I don't care about a lot of extra space in here. So I want to see exactly the portion uh, of the of the scene that is going to be rendered and what's going to be included in my thumbnail. So to do that, the best way that I found is if we move our cursor to the top right hand corner, and once our cursor turns into this little cross, this little white cross, um, click and drag, and that's going to open up a new uh, kind of window or a new view here. And from this new view, we are going to want to click this little camera button right here. So this is going to be our camera view. And you can see everything that is outside of this bounding rectangle here is going to be excluded from our scene. Basically, we're only going to see what is in this rectangle's view. Um, so we can actually go ahead and select our camera um, in, the, uh, in our uh, scene collections over here. And we can click this uh, move button on the top left hand corner. Um, and that's going to allow us to, to move our camera out um, and move it back up and we can kind of get different views of what we want. So I'm going to move the camera uh, out a little bit, kind of zoom out. Uh, I've got a lot of assets that I kind of want to show. So uh, something like that looks pretty good to me. That should uh, give me a lot of room to work with and express some artistic creativity. Um, so from here, the world is really your oyster. Uh, the, the main tools that you're going to want to use are going to be in this left-hand navigation bar right here where we have our move option and we just click on an item in a scene and we can move it around and we can reposition it. We have our rotate option, which basically, well, it rotates the, the object. So we can have that Calphite Queen facing us like that. We could have the Calphite Queen kind of showing its belly to us if we wanted to do some zany thing like that. Um, and then we also have uh, the scale, which we saw before, where you can make uh, certain portions of it much larger or flatter if you needed to do that for any reason. Um, and finally, we have this uh, transform, which really is all of these options all as one. So we can move, scale, um, transform, and uh, resize this as needed. Uh, so that's just one portion of this. Let's go ahead and also import a few more assets to make this scene look a little bit better. Get
All right, so now you can see we've imported a couple of the, the objects in the game, and this is where you really get to be creative. Um, you can position and rotate and resize these things however you want. And with this scene right here, we've already got our player kind of facing off in a dramatic uh, face off between him and the, the cow fight queen. We've got a worker in the background just kind of staring us down, um, some little object scenes and uh, some pillars and, and rubble in the background kind of giving us a little bit of more texture and, and positioning of, of where we are and what we're looking at here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and imported most of the objects that I exported out of the game itself, and I've just kind of gone ahead and rearranged them in a fashion that really suits what I'm looking for. So remember, this this view over here is basically everything that's going to be captured in the scene. So you can see right here, this little sliver of rock is not going to be in the scene, and that's all right with me. But I've gone ahead and positioned everything in like, a, we got a little campsite over here. We've got both forms of the Calphite Queen herself, a little skeleton, some still Lagmites, um, a calphite worker over here, and then a little obelisk and shrine, some animal skulls and shrubbery around here. So I'm really liking the way this scene is looking, but now we want to light it appropriately. And this is where Blender really excels because sure, we could export this scene and render this scene right as it is by going to the render tab and render image. However, you'll see that once this renders, it's going to be very, very ugly, and that's because there is only a single light in the scene. So you can see, basically, this is not what we're looking for in terms of a thumbnail image, right? We've got some illumination on our character over here, but that is it. So we have no glow from the fire. We've got no glow from the Calphite Queen's eyes. We have no glow from maybe the amulet of torture that I'm wearing on the front of my, my character's uh, neck over here. We've got no glow from this magic attack that the Calphite Queen is about to attack. So let's go ahead and add light sources to all of this, and I will show you how to do that. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click uh, this button over here, and this is going to be our viewport shading button. So once we select that, um, it's actually going to show what our scene is going to look like when it's rendered with lighting. Um, so you can see if we select our light here in the top right hand corner from our scene collection, we're able to move that around and you can see how our, our scene dynamically changes to reflect and update shadows and occlusion and um, ray tracing and all of those cool properties about light. So generally when it comes to lighting, it's very easy to overdo it, um, but I want to have a lot of focus on the character, a lot of focus on the cow fight queen, and then some ambient glow coming from the, the fire in the campsite. So in order to start this, I'm going to want to add some additional lights. Um, so I can come over here to the top left hand corner and click the add button, and then I can go down to a light and I'm just going to add a point light. So there's several different types of lights that you can choose. We're going to be adding a point light. And then if we come over to the right hand side and click this object data properties, um, it looks like a little light bulb. Uh, this is where we can control some of the aspects about our light. So if we move this up, you can see it's only a 10 watt light. So we can move it around and you can see very subtly it happens to enhance the glow of the Calphite Queen, uh, but it's definitely not powerful enough to simulate a full fire. Um, so you can use uh, this, I don't know what, really what to call it, uh, to change your viewport. Um, so I'm going to make it so that it, I can see on the on top of my viewport here and just kind of move this light uh, right where I would expect it to be inside the fireplace. Maybe move it up a little bit. Um, and now I can come over to the color over here and pick a nice orangish, orangish hue, uh, maybe deviating into red a little bit. And let's go ahead and up this to uh, 1000 watts. So now you can see in our scene, we've got what looks like a real fireplace going here. So it's, it's emanating a beautiful glow. And we can move this light up and down. You can see when we move it super low, it kind of goes out of the scene. Um, so we want to have it like positioned maybe somewhere right around here. 
that really makes it look like it's coming from the fireplace and it's kind of just illuminating everything in the campsite and reflecting off of the Calphite Queen herself. So instead, I've gone ahead and I've added a spotlight uh, over here and kind of positioned it towards the background with a skeleton in this Calphite over here, just so it's not like pitch black over there and that you can see them. Now I think I'm going to do the same thing for the Calphite Queen over here. So let's go ahead and click on add and we'll go to light and we're going to do a spotlight. So this is great for illuminating uh, a whole area rather than a single point in the scene. Um, and so we'll, we'll control this just like we would any other light. We're able to drag it up um, and we can use this little hand icon to, to move the view and kind of position us where we want it in the view. So we'll move this uh, the spotlight a little bit closer and you can see exactly where it's going to be shining down um, on. So we are actually going to want to um, to use this, this little blue arrow uh, and we should be able to kind of position that right like that on the calphite. Um, so now with this, white is always a great color to use for these because it basically illuminates the natural colors of... Uh, the models themselves so you can see these models already have materials painted over them um, or applied to them so let's go ahead and illuminate the the calphite's natural color with about 3000 watts of white power that's a little intense so we can do two things we can either move this back a little bit so maybe dialing that back to around 2000 moving it a little bit closer um, just so that we capture all of the wings and the calphite herself uh, so that looks pretty good. The, the Calphite's nice and illuminated now, um, and it looks like it's making some kind of magical attack. Uh, so we can do something like really cool, like a blue lightning effect, or we can add another white here. So this is another great example of where we could use a point light. So let's go ahead and add another point light. Let's go ahead and move it towards our Calphite over here. I'm just, again, I'm just using the, moving it around the viewport a little bit just so I can get a better idea of its 3D perspective and where it is in relation to the actual Calphite model. So I'm gonna try a nice like electric blue and we'll bump that up to a thousand watts. Something like that looks pretty cool. And a thousand might be a little bit overkill, or we could even dim that blue light down to a, something a little bit softer, something like, just like that. I think that looks really, really nice. Let's go ahead and render the scene and, and see how it's turning out so far. All right, that is super, super cool. Again, we have that campfire, which is really glowing everything. We've got the cow fight in the background that's about to attack us with some sort of magical attack, which is nice and blue and it's illuminated by that spotlight so it's no longer uh, a dark gray we can actually pretty clearly see uh, that cow fight in the background and then over here with with our skeleton and our stalagmites we definitely bring that into view um, as we as we see um, the, the cow fight in, in that background one thing that i really don't like about this is we can see this spotlight is actually capturing a corner of this fallen pillar and I would actually prefer to keep this pillar in the dark. Um, it's not really a central portion of the scene that I want to illuminate. Same reason why I didn't want to, to put anything over here. In my vision for, for this scene, it's taking place at night. So everything is, is glowing from the fire. And we're using white light to illuminate certain key aspects of the scene. To me, this stuff over here isn't as important as the player and the calphites. These rocks over here aren't as important as, you know, the, again, the player and these calphites. So let's see if we can correct this by adjusting this light a little bit. There we go. I think that looks a lot better for, for me. Um, and the, one of the last things we want to do in terms of lighting and, and so as not to overdo this um, is probably to, to get the character nice and illuminated. So we do have a, a, a point light over here and I think that's going to be the primary illumination around the character. Um, it was not bad where we had it, but 
we can kind of move it around behind him and that's gonna illuminate his back really 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 nicely um, and make it so that it looks like there's a light behind him and we can kind of see all of the, cl the clear details around the character there and of course if you wanted to do something like if you were facing the front of, of the player and they had like an amulet of torture or a, a fury or a blood shard or I mean, you could illuminate something if you had a cool weapon like a scythe or a T-bow. You could make it green and stuff like that. So uh, there's a, really a lot of options here. So I wanted to add another area light on the Calphite Queen herself, just because you can see the fire is illuminating one half of her, but the other half of her is, is kind of dim, and um, we want her to be one of the central pieces of content within this rendered image. Uh, so we definitely want her to show up and be central to the image because that's what the video is all about. So I'm just going to take this this uh spotlight and kind of do what we did before uh in some of the other aspects of the scene just kind of position it on the the right side of the calphite queen so you can see there are a lot of adjustments that i can make here to the size of the light the radius of it um where it's positioned how focused it is uh, so these area lights are just really useful for lighting up large objects or whole areas of a scene where a point light would be better suited for uh, something that that's more focused and where light is emanating from a central source All right, that looks basically perfect to me in terms of lighting. What a difference from the original scene that we saw in the very beginning. Okay, so now we have our wonderful scene and we want to take it to the next level by adding actual materials and a ground to it so it's not this just weird gray checkboxy stuff. So to do that, we're going to want to come to the add select mesh and create a plane. So here's our plane. It is very small um, and it is very, well, plain. <laughs> it's a plain plane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the right hand side over here and select the material properties. We're gonna click, click new and then under base color, we are going to select this little yellow dot right here and click image texture. So I've actually gone ahead and found an image texture. Uh, we're gonna open one from our computer. You can get these on Google Images. It, really, it's just an image of um, an image of anything we want. In my case, it's gonna be sand. So I'm gonna come to our my desktop here, and I'm going to select the sand material right here. And we can see now that um, in our viewport, we've got a little patch of sand right there. So um, that looks great. And we can actually go ahead and scale that up and make it nice and big so that it covers everyone's feet. So um, let's go ahead and hit the scale option here or press S on our keyboard and we will scale that up. And you can see the larger that we make it, the more it kind of gets uh, stretched and zoomed and I want to try to preserve that natural uh, sand quality as much as possible so I'm going to keep it a relatively small-ish size um, so that it doesn't get too grainy so something in something like this right here um, and instead of making this absolutely massive um, I am going to copy it into multiple places within my scene so I'm just going to use control C and control V and we're just going to make lots of little patches of this texture and we're going to move it to all of the places in our scene where we um, where it's visible within the camera. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. I'll probably add just one one or two more little tiles here to cover up anything underneath the Calphite Queen. Um, but that should cover most of our terrain. 
And now we just need to work on the background to get a nice maybe night sky or uh, we'll, we'll try a variety of, uh, of backgrounds to, to see what we like here. Okay, so for the last step in making this image really perfect, we want to add kind of like a, a starry night background to this. And really for any kind of uh, background that you're doing for thumbnail images, um, we're going to be using a sky dome or a UV sphere object to create it. So the first thing that we need to do is let's go to add, click on mesh and select UV sphere. So this is going to be our sky dome. I know it's small right now, but let's go ahead and um, without moving it up, let's just hit S on the keyboard and scale it up and do it again until it's nice and large. Uh, something like something like this should do it. Again, I'm looking in my camera feed to see and make sure making sure it's covering like all aspects of the camera. Uh, something like this looks nice. And um, go ahead and move that just so that it is um, covering all of the scene and images. You can see right back here, it, it's got everything nice and cleanly cut. It's not cutting off any of our um, any of our assets in the scene. It's simply providing a nice curved backdrop. So once we have this, um, something optional that you can do is you can click on this um, this Y button right here and you can change in the top left hand corner change from object mode to edit mode um, and you can actually select the bottom half of these and hit delete and this is going to delete all of the vertices uh, for this particular object right here so just selecting that and hitting delete and so now we basically have a half dome right because i mean we don't even need the, the full dome it's it's just less to render um, we can also come over to the right hand side and the object properties and under viewport display, we can unclick uh, the shadow button uh, because this is our backdrop and we don't need it rendering shadows against this. Uh, it's just extra computational power that, that we don't need to expend for this particular task. All right, so with all of that out of the way, um, things are looking pretty good, but it's still a plain gray backdrop. So how do we fix this? Well, we can click this plus button over here uh, with our sphere selected, click the plus button, and under general, click on shading. So now we are in our shader view, so you can see our our, our image looks uh, kind of weird, uh, but we'll just kind of try to position this something like this, just so we can see our backdrop. And you can see we're clipping a little bit right here. Um, so let's let's go ahead and correct that right now. So go back into layout view. We want to uh, address this little clip right here. Um, in the back. So we'll go ahead out of edit mode, back into object mode, because we want to work with the entire object. And we're just going to take uh, these controls right here and bring that in just a smidge. And now we aren't clipping nearly as much, and we should be good. So up in the top, let's go back to our shading workspace. Uh, now we have a nice clear view of, of what we need to work with. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to apply a material to the inside of this dome. So let's come down to material properties and click new. And you can see that's going to create a principal BSDF layer and a material output. Um, and we're going to have to add a few things to this. Um, the first thing that we want to add is going to be called a, uh, a noise texture. So hit uh, shift and A on the keyboard. That's going to open up this little window here where you can search through all of the different uh, material shading shading properties uh, that you can hook together, the shading nodes, um, and search for noise texture. And we're also going to want two other nodes, uh, a texture coordinate and a mapping. So place down your noise texture here, shift A, search for mapping place your mapping down shift a once more and search for texture coordinate all right so we'll we'll connect the uh, generated layer here into our vector in our mapping and in our mapping we'll connect this vector to our noise texture so we want our scale to be about 1000 
and we want our detail to be at least six. And you can play with these values to your heart's content. That's going to uh, affect how many stars there are uh, in, in the night sky. So uh, lastly, let's go ahead and just see how this looks. So we'll plug the color of this into our base color over here. And let's go ahead and put this into the, the viewport shading. So you can see we do have, it looks kind of like a, a grainy material is being applied to that. Uh, so what we want to do is we actually want to, to pass this through our handy dandy color ramp. So once again, hit shift A uh, and search for a color ramp node. Let's go ahead and place this down and move these around so that we have a little bit more space to work. And instead of plugging into the base color of our principled BSDF directly, we're going to be plugging in to our color ramp and applying that to our base color over here. And as soon as we start dragging in these sliders, you can see, let's drag this to about 0.65. And we'll drag this one down into about 0.7. And look at that. We have a really beautiful starry night, just like that. So it's a, it's a little faint. Uh, we, we want some more pronounced stars. Uh, and so what we can do is we can actually drag the color from this into our emission channel. And now the stars will start emitting and voila, we have an absolutely beautiful starry night. And you can play around with these slider values to, you know, increase the density of stars, uh, reduce the density of stars, um, and, and how white they are. I found that on the black slider, about 0.65 works well, while on the white slider, anywhere from 0 0.70 to 0 0.75 uh, looks and works really nice. So to finish things off, um, this looks pretty good on our shading. Let's go ahead and get back to the modeling. Um, and actually we can just click render up here and render image or F12 on your keyboard board. And let's go ahead and render this as our final image. And look at how nice that looks. How cool is that? It is a beautiful 3D scene built out of old school RuneScape assets with awesome lighting. And this would serve as the perfect YouTube thumbnail for any one of your cow fight or desert themed videos. And really it only took us about 30 to 45 minutes to crank something out like this. And as, as you get faster and more comfortable with Blender, you'll be able to run through these images as fast as you could use or do a, a basic Photoshopping image. So this is definitely what I'll be using for uh, the next main to max number five episode. So uh, I hope that you guys check out that series as well because it is coming out on a weekly basis and it is going great it's making some awesome progress on the account and thank you all so much for for watching this video and learning a little bit more how to use uh, a blender within old school runescape